Welcome to Magical Moments. I'm your host, Elena Chapman, and it's all about that ease and flow. And I have a really kind of special nugget for you, I think, that's going to help you in your daily life. You know, it's really interesting. I have been watching, and also, hey, you know what? I'm growing all the time myself, or else I wouldn't be able to help you guys, right? And sometimes... When we get deceived, either by people or situations, or sometimes, folks, even our own beliefs can deceive us, we end up beating ourselves up. What do I mean by that? We say, oh, I can't believe I fell for that. Or how could I be so stupid, right? We say these awful things. All right. The thing is... When we have a deception, just like when we have an obstacle, it's a time to learn. And it's time to gaze, gain a little bit of wisdom in our lives. So why don't we put a positive spin on that? Let's change it. Value ourselves a little bit more, please. It's important. And say instead, wow, I am so happy that I was able to spot this now. Or, gosh, that was really a good lesson that I will never have to go through again because now I know better. (laughs) Do you see how that changes the whole situation from a really bad vibration of the whole day and taking a hard lesson that you hold on for the rest of your life? Instead, you turn it into a good lesson. You Gain the wisdom the universe was trying to give you to begin with, and you move forward with more optimism and open to learning and growing and becoming. Do you see the difference? It's big. That little tiny nugget can change your whole life. Isn't that amazing? You got to love it. I have an incredible guest for you today. Now, I have known Christine Lee since, I think, 2014. We both studied with Bob Proctor. We were both the first time there at his seminar. I think it was her first time. I know it was mine. And um, I don't know anyone with as big a heart as she has. Um, This this woman is incredible. And I'm bringing her here because she has written a book. And not only that, she is an incredible entrepreneur who has done incredible things. Uh, I want you to get to know her because she's just beautiful and she has some really incredible lessons to share with you she has led a very colorful life and relies heavily on legacy culture and history to assist to assist her in her thought process a third culture woman from korea christine moved to the united states when she was a child the deep parts of her roots and upbringing has led her to many different parts of the world In her book, she has written a book, Christine reflects on how her mother is her eternal hero. See, now that's why I love her. (laughs) And with that in mind, she would like to inspire people to look towards their parents as a solid foundation for their own paradigms or blocks in their minds, good or bad. In It is in this book that Christine found a way to celebrate her family and immaculate traditional values, which is connected to all of the work she does. She is a true believer that investing and reinvesting in yourself is the perfect way to make connections with people. And I want to bring Kristen Lee on right this minute. Hello, Christine, how are you? Fine. Thank you very much for having me, Miss Elena. Amazing. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am so, yeah, it has been very, a very long time that we've known each other. You know, it really has. Yeah. Yeah. Eight, nine years. Eight, nine years. It's yeah. my, my honor to know you. So well, much same. <laughs> well, thank you. You are too. So let's let's talk a little bit about this. First, you you when you came here, I know that you opened a school in California, correct? Yes. Could you talk about that? Because here you are, you came here with your parents and 
instead of just going me, 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 you thought about all the people who were coming here and who were struggling. So could you tell us a little bit about that school that you opened? Yes, actually, um, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm, I didn't open it. It was just came to my life one day about 10 years ago, before I know you, 2012 on January 1st, one of my friends asked me to go to this small uh, university uh, in California. And I asked him, uh, why do I need to go there? And he says his car has broken down. So, okay, yeah, I can give you pick up there, and you need a ride. And then I was there, and then he says, well, you know, I need to take your car. So can you just stay at a place in campus? That's a university. There's someone who's waiting. And make a long story short, I happened to become operator on that school for one year, and then I find out, oh, my God, this is my passion. But I find out we had to close it down just because they had um, a lot of lawsuits. <laughs> it was very serious Oh, lawsuit. you know, yeah, it happens. Sometimes the people who are so big with their hearts, they're not so good with the financial. I used, I, I got certified by Right Relations and was working, when I met you, I was working through the court system for people who weren't getting along in court. So I had a lot of divorcees, I had a lot of parents who were trying to get the father to pay or whatever the nonsense was, the, all that drama. And I, and I was teaching these people the principles that you and I both know. And they they also closed because they didn't know how to manage their money. <laughs> it's, yeah. Sometimes we're good in one thing, we're not so good in the other, right? <laughs> yeah. We're, we, we, we're really grateful for that. We learned that lesson from Bob, right? Yes. You balance it out, your finance, your emotions, and your relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, your prosperity, this has to be balanced out. Other than that, you fell down in a way someplace, some around, you know, continue to get all these lessons from the uh, universe because until they get it, they're going to get you, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you also wrote this wonderful book, My Hero, uh, a letter, a love letter to my mother. Now, what, what? struck you? Why did you write this book? What realization did you have? Well, so, you know, about seven years ago, you and I, we were uh, going to the uh, Bob Proctor event as all the time. And you know how uh, Peggy McCoy, she is an entrepreneur as a Peggy New York McCall. Times and yeah. Yeah, international bestseller author. And then I was always listening to her and follow her as Bob. And she had this uh, complete author program, and then I, I bought the program, and then I started to listen to it, but I didn't have any confidence because English was my second language. And yeah. then I told her, I'd like to write a book about my mom. I have a passion for my mom who sacrificed her life. And I know most mom does, like you and I, we all do, but especially my mom had to go through a lot of the struggles from South Korea after the war, colonized by Japan, and she would get kidnapped. And, you know, all this, all this story wow. that she had, and that really touched my heart. I was just a little different. I was her, she was my motivator. I mean, I was her protector. I don't know how to say this. I, she was my everything. Like, you know, when you're a child, your parents, your mom is everything. That's how, how I was. So I said, I have a passion to write about my mom, how she has to so devoted to Jesus Christ in her life. She, Her Bible was always with her morning and night and go to church and pray or worry. And then I go, I need to write about her because this is who I am here today. I just want to publish the book. And then I talked to Peggy and she says, you can write it. And I said, well, I don't think I can because English is my second language. And then I don't have the confidence of self-loving me. And she said, yes, you can. And she walked away. <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> Becky. <laughs> and then I thought she was very mean to me, but actually she wasn't. She actually, and then I knew I followed her directions. 
Miss Elena, and I follow. You know, you and I were very coachable, right? You gotta yes. be coachable. You have life. to be coachable. You do. If you're not coachable, you're not. Bob used to it. tell me that too. He said, "My God, you know, you're such a leader, but you are so easy to teach too." I think that's the sign of a good leader to be open to teaching. You know what? That's how I'm, I, I'm so resonate with you. You're so good at it. I love you for that. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, it took me seven. Seven years to write it. I'll be honest with you. I took it. Wow. I, I wrote it 2015, and then I put it away because I was going through a lot of a lot of struggles from the school that I I just wanted this school to not to go to court and you know all, yeah. all kind of problems that I was facing. But I Life. had to go through. I had to go through that. I put it away. And when pandemic came in about two three years ago, we had to close down campus. Oh. So I'm like, oh my God! Now what am I gonna do? Yeah, right. Right. So I, I, I said, okay, this is good time to write the book that I put away my mom, and I don't know how I'm gonna finish this. And I wrote it in my garage, getting up, discipline myself, five o'clock in the morning, one and a half hour every single day. I wrote it, bring my me- back my memory. I'm sorry, excuse me. And I start right, and then I was continue weeping myself, crying out because those memory of the momentum comes back to you, right? When you are a child growing up with your parents, or with those beautiful moments and those childish uh, childhood that you were with your siblings, your relationship with the schools, and with your God, because she was the one who were really, because we were the only one in Christian family in South Korea, small villages, where they call it snake villages, because we had so many snakes all oh over in the village. <laughs> you won't believe it. Wow. And then they were actually worshipping the uh, uh, um, big snakes. There were big snakes coming on from the wow. roof. Wow. In the morning. You won't wow. believe it. They were like a dragons. And totally then, different I life. So young. I was so young. I got so scared coming into my room, into my mom, sitting on my mom's lap, and all these kind of things in the book. So, But then she will never give up. She will never give up. She will walk to the, she will walk to the church about 1.5 miles, getting up 4 o'clock in the morning, with me and my other siblings, you know, we're still young. And working with the oil lamp, we didn't have any electricity. That was 1960s, right after 1950s, we had a war. And and then she would work whether rainy, wind, or storms, or the, the snow was up in your <sighs> valley, whatever. It's very amazing when you're living in third world country where there's no water, running water where there were I used to fetch the water for my parents, my mom, because you know, I love to do everything that she need, she wants me to do. Right. So that's who I was. And then I said I'm gonna write this book about her because where I grew up was very unique. A lot of snakes, a lot of the idols they were worshipping, you know how Korea they were uh we had colonized from Japan for 36 years. So we were lost. The kingdom was destroyed. We didn't know where we were going. But we're big right now, probably Samsung and Hyundai. But right now, in that time, was just so... Yeah. It's a, just a very... It could have gone either way, and you just don't know. It's your mom's persistence and her discipline. I think that you really learned a lot of. Uh, was there another lesson that you really learned from your mom, a real good one that you have found that has stuck with you through your life and guided you? Oh, yeah. Um, never lie. <laughs> never lie. Never lie to <laughs> That's a good one. It, it always, she, what she, what her big lesson was always be honest to yourself. It doesn't oh, matter. I love that. that. Whatever comes to your life or, you know, because that's the basic, that is the basic scratch that you want to tear Honestly, standing up for your life, then world will, Jesus will reward you. But if you're starting to excusing yourself, why I cannot do this? Why, why I'm not going to do this? I'm going to put this away or, or something like that. And then you're going to get paid for it. 
And then she and I got I I got paid for it because I I didn't listen to her. I was off the track. I'm gonna be honest. I was a lost child when I was um, teenagers. When I we all get lost in teenagerhood. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's part God. of it. I was so yeah. <laughs> sad and learned a lesson. But you know what? It was a good lesson. You always listen to intuitive. Listen to yeah, your, your inner intuition. Power. Yes, your the inner power. power. Yes. Yeah. 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 We didn't knew you have a power, and she's teaching that. That is the gift of the God from most people wouldn't know. And just like Bob is teaching that us, that six faculties, right? Right. That we have. Right. Right. The six gifts and intuition yeah. and perception and realization and memory and imagination, right? All those? Yeah. 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 Most people, most people wouldn't, because they believe in God, but they wouldn't recognize those six mental faculties within us. And so I learned that from her, especially like intuitive, you know, listen yeah. to your own voice. Then, then running around shiny objects, they are not going to do that for you anything. Just listen to yourself very honestly. The gospel is in you. That's going to get you to where you are. And, it is. And then true. don't deny it. Don't try. Don't ever deny it because that is a true voice. And that must be the soul. one that. Yeah. For your life. yeah, it is. It is you the one. Yeah. It, oh, I love it. Now, okay, so I have to ask you, because there are lots of people out there, Christine, mm-hmm. who, you know, they didn't have such great relationships with their mom. Uh, for Okay, so for me, now I've come to terms, I learned my lessons with my mom. My mom was my greatest teacher. However, we were always at odds. But there are some people who haven't even learned those lessons, and their mom is not in a good place with them. What would you say to to people who have still that journey to go to? It, it's really important for us to to learn the lessons of our parents. I really believe that there is a grander scheme in things than we ever know, and that mm-hmm. those parents, for some reason are are here for us to either teach us something that our soul needs to learn or something that, uh, I don't know, karmic, who knows, but they are there for a reason. And what would you say to people who are still not on that journey to try to learn about themselves and their relationship to their parents? You know, it's such a good question because I didn't get along with my father. I'll tell you that. My <laughs> father was Ethne, and then he wasn't good to my mom. He used to beat my mom a lot. So I'll be honest with you. I So I had to really, like, protect my mom from him. You know, uh, so I, I get it. So when you don't see that your parents, you don't get along or you don't see the good mother, don't worry about it. You know what you should do? If I, I'm going to go to library. I know you will go to library. With I love me, libraries. Yeah. Like me. We'll go to library or find someone who can be a good model for yourself. That's going to resonate you. But I would go to library and read a good book about biographs that who resonates in your imagination. Maybe Warren Buffett. Maybe, you know. Yeah, like, create your hero, basically. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, someone that who always is done and who's going to admire you, you follow their directions because they're the one. It doesn't have to be your parents. Sometimes parents right. can be, they can be your odd. You're right. Don't have good relationship like me and my father. I didn't have a good relationship. Yeah. But it's okay. Forgive them. It, it, yes. They just did their best at their own paces anyway, right? Right. So right. So have to don't give up on it just read a book or find someone like a biograph and i read about napoleon Hill's working with the laws you know those books yes. is amazing and then, <laughs> they are yeah, there's so much out there basic. yeah yeah and, and then put that into your mind and saying that that's who i'm gonna be you know that is that is it right there. Life will control you, right? It is so true. So many people feel like we are born into a lot. You know what I mean? This is my lot in life. I had a really tough childhood, and this is what I've got, and I'm a survivor, and la, la, la. But they don't understand. And I really do feel this life is an illusion. 
and you really can be who you want to be. And so, I, you know what, Christine, I did the same thing. I I didn't do it because I needed to. I mean, I had difficulties with my mom, but it wasn't anything traumatizing. I just stayed away from her because she was just so negative. But I would go to the libraries. I loved to get books that showed me heroines or women that I wanted to be like. And we were both really lucky because when we grew up, women's women were just starting to come forward and say, enough is enough. I want to be treated yeah. more as an equal. I, I want to have some freedom in my life. I don't want to be ruled by someone else. And right. so we, it was just all these women started to come up and be on TV and really strong strong roles. And I started to fashion myself after them. You know, yeah. I found a lot like Cher. I started to, I loved her long hair. I had long hair forever. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be I like love Cher. It. Yeah. Those, and, and you can create yourself and the lessons yeah. when you're ready and you heal your parts of yourself, that's the perfect time then to go back and look at your relationship with your parents and then heal that. Cause then you're strong enough. It, it really yeah. does taking, don't you think it, you've got to get strong within yourself before you go back to the old wounds and not get sucked into them, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, who doesn't have that story, right? Who I doesn't mean, have that story is exactly right. Absolutely. I mean, you know, life happens and then it doesn't happen for you. It happens with you. So we should know that we have to be in control of our lives. And then it's not blaming, oh, my parents wasn't really that good as. Maybe somebody like my other parents, or how come she has the best parents, but I didn't have it? It doesn't work like that. Look at Winfrey Ofra. How did she? She was always grown up with, you know. Difficulty. Yeah. 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 But, you know, excuse me, but what did she do? She overcame with the gratitude. What can you do? With the gratitude. Gratitude. Giving her love and forgiveness and then move on with what's, what's right now on your plate. And, Move on with your passion, move on with your dream, and then give a good gratitude to the people that who hurt you, who gave you lessons, because they're big teachers. They're good teachers for me. I always say that. I know it's not easy, but you know what? Actually, without them, you wouldn't, I wouldn't been here because they, they actually build your mental muscles. They yeah. actually build your emotional muscles. It really does. You know, I, yeah, it really is true. It is good to always have a mentor. It is always good to have someone who helps you. Um, I see a lot of women. I see young. I've I've started to find these while well, they came to me, 17-year-old girls who are just looking for models, looking for um, a way out of the family way of doing things. Uh, if a family's pushing them into working in a factory or working here or there, they want to, they, they're saying, wait a minute, I want something different. There are so many young women now with the way the world is that they really do need that mentor to help them to become what it is that they were meant to be. Where can they get your book, Christine? Oh, yeah. It's in Amazon. Uh, you just Google the My Hero or Love Letters to My Mother. My Hero. Uh, okay. Yeah, My Hero. And then you can get that from the uh, Barnes & Nobles, too. I just published it in, in South Korea. And then, um, yeah, we're talking about making a movie on these stories. So Yay! Get it, you know? Ah, good for you. I'm excited. I, I love think that's very good. Oh, oh, I'm so proud of you. It's oh, Gosh, you've just grown thank since you. 2014. So oh, well, thank you. <laughs> you are amazing. I'm telling you, you are thank so, you. so, so amazing. Thank you, hon. <laughs> thank you very oh. much. Remember, it's all about that soul wisdom, the things that we are being guided in our life to believe that, to listen, to open up to it. And oh my gosh, when we do that, the blocks go away and the spirit answers. And that's how it works. Love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And let's just keep growing. Thank you so much.